Okay, this is the uh, Paul 19, exam 2 for Physics 101. Uh, the first questions are, are free response questions. What is at a ground level? I kick a ball with a mass of 1.1 kilograms and uh, it travel at an angle of 30 degrees and I give it a horizontal speed of 18 meters per second. All right, so let's see. This angle is 30 degrees. That's the scenario that I'm dealing with. Before I get started, I'm just going to go ahead and find out what are my x and y components because I know in this problem I'm going to need both. Uh, my v naught x is going to be 18 meters per second times the cosine of 30, and uh, that's equal to 16 meters per second. And then similarly, v naught y is 18 meters per second sine of 30, and that's equal to 9 meters per second. Okay, um, and now I want to figure out what is the maximum height of the ball. I want to know what is this distance, y. I'm looking also just at part b. I'm going to want to know what is the range, x. And then how long does it take for the time for the ball to come back to ground level? I want to know the time here. And then I want to know the speed of the ball at a very particular time, at t equal 11 seconds. So our first job is to figure out the maximum height of the ball. In order to do that, I need to know what is the time up here. So for part A, I need to know what is T top. What is T top? Now I know the velocity at the top. The velocity at the top is equal to zero, and that's equal to V naught Y plus A Y T. Uh, let, me, let me rephrase that. The velocity in the Y direction at the top of the trajectory is equal to zero because of course we know that there is a velocity in the x direction at the top but the velocity in the y direction is zero so i can say zero equals i already know v naught y is nine minus 10 meters per second squared times t so t is equal to 0 0.9 seconds so if t equals 0 0.9 seconds um and now I can find the position. Now that I know the time, I say y is equal to v naught y t plus one half a y t squared. But I'm using this time that I have here because that's what I want to know. I want to know the position at this point, and the time is 0 0.9 seconds when it reaches that point. So v naught y is 9 times 0 0.9 minus 5 times 0.9 squared the minus 5 came here half of negative 10 and so that's equal to 8.1 minus 4.1 that's equal to 4 meters all right so that's the first answer for part b what is the maximum horizontal range uh, i know that x is equal to vx times t so i want to know what is the position here so i need to know what is the time there if I want to know the position at a particular point, I just need to know what time is it at that point, and then I can find the position. Uh, I know the time that it's at that point. That time, which actually is part C, I'll go ahead and answer it, t total is equal to twice t top, because this type of motion where it goes up and then comes back down again is symmetrical. If this is 0.9 seconds, this is 1.8 seconds. So that is going to be equal to 1.8 seconds. That's part C, and I'll use that up here for part B. Uh, v naught x is 16 meters per second times 1.8 seconds, and that gives me, uh, what, 29 meters. So that's part B. I've already got part C. Now part D is I want to know the velocity, or excuse me, not the velocity. I want to know the speed of the ball at one, this should be 1.1 seconds. Because if it was 11, it wouldn't be doing anything. I'm sitting on the ground. Because, uh, of course, it, it hits the ground at 1.8 seconds. I'll fix that in your copy. So D is I want to know the velocity at 1.1 seconds, or the speed at 1.1 seconds. At 1.1 seconds, the ball is roughly right here, and it has a velocity in the x direction, and it has a velocity in the y direction. I need to know both of those. I already know vx, because vx doesn't change. It's going to be equal to 16 meters per second. That's the velocity in the x direction at the beginning. 
vy, on the other hand, is equal to v naught y plus ay times t, which is going to be equal to what, 9, that was v naught y, minus 10 times t, which is 1.1, that's 9 minus 11, or negative 2. So, yeah, 9 minus 11 or negative 2. So my vector looks like this. I have 16 in this direction. Uh, I have minus 2 here, so 2 meters per second in that direction. So my resultant vector is going to look something like that. And the magnitude of that will be 16 squared plus negative 2 squared. And that's equal to, well, it just rounds off to equal to 16 meters per second. Okay, remember with the free response, I'm looking for your work. So if you don't show your work, I'm not going to give you full credit. In fact, if you just write an answer, I'm not going to give you any credit at all. Okay, this block is on an inclined plane and being pulled up by a rope with a force of 25 newtons. Uh, I want to know several things. I want to know the normal force. I want to know the acceleration is so there's no friction. And then we'll add some friction. So let's look at A and B first. I'm going to begin by doing my free body diagram. There's Fn, uh, there's Fw. I know that this angle is 90 minus 30, or 60 degrees. And now if I redraw this, you might not have done, it wasn't required, but I find that it's useful. I have Fn, I have F, which is 25 newtons. And then I'm going to go ahead and resolve Fw into its two components. This is Fw cosine 60 and Fw sine of 60. I do part three. And for the third step, you know, there are two steps are free body diagram, resolve the vectors, and then in step three, I'm resolving, I'm uh, applying Newton's second law. Uh, for part A, I'm looking for the normal force. So I'm only going to need to do Newton's second law, at least for part A in the y direction. So I'm going to do that first. Some of the forces in the y direction. I know that for an inclined plane, the forces in the y direction, the net force in the y direction is zero. So some of the forces in the y is zero because a y is equal to zero. So I have Fn minus Fw sine 60 equals zero. So that means Fn is equal to Fw sine 60. Fw is m times g. Uh, m was, what is m? 2 kilograms. Uh, 2 times 10 times sine of 60. That's equal to 17 newtons. So that is my normal force, 17 newtons. Now, for part B, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the acceleration, assuming no friction. And I'm going to have to look at my X forces. So, hold on, I'm going to pause here. I think I have an error in my notes. Just a sec. Nope, I'm sorry. No error. It was good. Okay, so for part B, I have uh, the sum of the forces in the X is going to be Fw cosine 60. Minus F. Look, I'm looking up here. I see my Fw cosine 60 is positive. My F is negative, so I've, I've subtracted the two. And that that's equal to Max. Now, it better work out that my acceleration is negative, because I know that this thing is accelerating up the incline plane, which is in the negative x direction. So that better work out. We'll see. Fw cosine 60 is uh, 20, excuse me, is um, 20 cosine of 60. Minus 25 is equal to the mass, which is 2 kilograms times Ax. Uh, this is going to be minus 15 equals 2Ax. So Ax equals minus 7.5 meters per second squared. All right, I would have accepted positive 7.5 if you gave some directional thing, like up the incline plane. For part C... I want to know what is the frictional force on the block if I assume some coefficient of kinetic friction. And then for part D, what is the acceleration of the block? So let's look at this. So if I have, I'll do this in a different color. If I have a frictional force, it's going to be in this direction. 
is I'm going to add a force right here. That's how I alter my free body diagram. That frictional force always opposes the direction of motion. And if it opposes the direction of motion, in this case, if things are going up the incline plane, because I got this force pulling it, and so the force, kinetic frictional force is going to be acting downward. Now, if I want to know what the frictional force is, I know that F k is equal to mu k times the normal force. But look, I've already found the normal force. So I just, my coefficient is 0.1, remember no units on that, 17 newtons. And so my kinetic frictional force is 1.7 newtons. That's the answer for that one. And then for part D, which is a little more complicated, I, um, I have to look at the sum of the forces in the x direction. So going back up here to my figure, I do these as positive. This is negative because it's in the negative x direction, and I add those together, and I set them equal to max, just like I did in part b. Uh, but now I have this new force, Fw cosine 60 plus F minus big F is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Put in some numbers here, 17 cosine 60. Uh, I've already found... F there, I know this is 25 equals to 2 times A, and then I solve this for A. What's this? 8.5. Let's just double check and see, make sure this makes sense. Um, AX, that that acceleration is smaller than this acceleration. That should be the case because I have this frictional force, but it's a small frictional force in comparison to the, the larger 25 Newton force. All right, that was the free response. That was worth uh, eight separate questions. Let's do the multiple choice. You hit a ball horizontally from the top of a cliff that is 80 meters tall. I'm looking at this situation. The ball is initial velocity of 4 meters per second, and the angle is 0. I want to know the horizontal range. I want to know what is x equal to. I know that x is equal to vx times t, and here I know that vx is 4 meters per second. So if I can find t, that is the time right here, then I can solve the problem. So I just need to find t. But the time required for the ball to drop is the same as a, as a ball that is following that path. So all I really need to know is how long does it take a ball to drop 80 meters? I can do that. We've done that in chapter 2. Uh, y is equal to v naught y t plus 1 half a y t squared. But v naught y is 0 because the initial velocity is all in the x direction. So I have minus 80. Remember, it starts at 0 and it goes down. So it's minus is equal to negative 5 t squared. And t, let's see, 80 over 5 is 16. So t is 4 seconds. So I take this, I plug it in here, and I get 16 meters. So c is the right answer. Kick a ball at an initial speed of 50 meters a second at an angle of 30 degrees from the x-axis. What is the x component of the velocity when t equals 3 seconds? Ah, so I'm looking for the x component of the velocity, but I know that that never changes because ax is equal to 0. So really, I don't even need this. It doesn't matter if t is 3 seconds or 12 seconds or whatever. So I say vx is v naught cosine of theta. And... Um, that's going to be 50 cosine of 30. And 50 cosine of 30 is equal to 43.3. Let's see is the right answer. 3, consider the previous problem. What is the y position of the ball when t is equal to 3 seconds? Okay, we sort of did a similar problem like this before. Uh, remember, this is a problem where it's going like this. At t equal 3 seconds, I just want to know the y position of the ball. So I say y is equal to v naught y t plus 1 half a y t squared. Projectile motion problems are always easier when you have the time. And here I have the time, thank goodness. So I can put this in. I have v naught sine theta t plus 1 half a y t squared. 
Okay, now I can put in some numbers. What was V naught here? Uh, 50 meters per second. T was three seconds. And so that gives me the answer, which is uh, 75 minus 45, which is 30 meters. A is the right answer. Soccer ball is kicked with an initial speed and at an angle theta. Which of the following statements is true? The vertical component of the velocity is greatest at the beginning and end of the trajectory. Okay, that is true. Um, let's see, I'll add a thing. It should be the magnitude of the vertical component. I'm going to pause this so I can make a note. Give me just a second. Okay. Uh, so the magnitude of the vertical component is greatest at the beginning and ending of the trajectory. Remember, it starts out big, gets smaller, goes to zero, gets bigger in the negative direction, and then it's like that. The vertical component of the velocity is zero at the top of the trajectory. Yeah, that's true too. Uh, the acceleration is zero at the top of the trajectory. That's not true. The acceleration in the y direction is always minus 10. The vertical component of the velocity is constant throughout the trajectory. That's also not true. So A is the right answer. Which of these plots represent the graph of a y position for versus time for an object launched horizontally? So that is one that looks like this. Uh, the object moves from left to right. So it starts out with a small neg or a small slope, a small negative y velocity. This one starts out with a small positive, big negative, oh, small po negative y velocity, and then gets faster in the negative direction. So C is the right answer. By the way, D starts out with a big positive velocity and gets slower, but this thing is speeding up in the y direction. The same height and same time, one ball is dropped and another is fired. Which one will have the larger speed? So I drop one, boop, boop, boop. I fire one like this. I did this in class. Uh, they take the same amount of time to get to these positions. It's just the amount of time for them to drop. However, one of them is going faster, and that's this one, because this one has this velocity component, and it has a velocity component here, whereas this one only has the y velocity component. So the fired ball does have the larger speed. Stone has initial speed of 10 meters per second in each of these scenarios, but the starting angle is different. Which starting angle would give the longest horizontal range? Okay, this one's going to go like this, this one's going to go like this, and this one's going to go like this. Now, if there was another, it is possible, it's really just because this angle is 45 degrees or less, it is possible to fire something at a certain angle so that it would have less than any one of these, but because A has an angle that is 45 degrees, or I, I think it's actually less than 45, but it's at least 45, uh, the answer is A. Plane is at position I and it drops a package. The plane continues at constant speed in a straight path to position two. Assuming no air resistance, where is the package when the plane is at position two? So it's here initially, and then it drops it. And this package is going to follow a path that looks like this. So when the plane is here, the package will be directly underneath the plane. So D. What is the x component of a vector that makes an angle of 40 degrees with a positive x axis and whose y component is 4 centimeters? Okay, so it's so a little tricky. You've got to read it carefully. The y component, uh, let's just call the vector r. ry is equal to 4, and theta is equal to 40. So now I need to figure out what r is. Let me get rid of this. So ry is r sine theta. 4 equals r sine of 40. And so that gives me solving that 4 over sine 40 equals 6.2. 6.2 is not the answer. I don't think so. yeah, no, 6.2 is an option because I'm looking for the x component. And so rx is equal to r cosine of 40. And that's equal to uh, 4.8. 
Vector A lies in the xy plane, it has a positive x component and a negative y component. So that means positive x, negative y, I'm somewhere in this fourth quadrant. But the magnitude of the x component is bigger than the magnitude of the y component. So that means that my vector is somewhere here. Now, the line bisecting this quadrant is at 300, excuse me, not 315, no, it's just 2... Yeah, no, 315, that's right. Is it 315? It says 270, 315, this is 360. So it's somewhere between 315 and 360, and the only answer that falls in that is A. Calculate the sum of these two vectors. Okay, so I want to know what is the magnitude of A plus B. Might be useful just to draw a picture. Let's see if we can figure out the answer just from drawing a picture. Six units at 60 degrees. And then two units along the negative y-axis, something like that. And then the resultant is going to be like this. So just from looking at the picture, I can tell that it's less than 6.2. So I can get rid of that, that, and that. So it gets it's either B or C. I don't know what it's going to be. It's sort of hard to tell. But um, so my first thing to do would be to resolve my vectors. AX equals 6 cosine of 60. AY equals 6 sine of 60. BX equals 0. BY equals negative 2. Let's do these. 6 cosine of 60, 6 sine of 60. Oh, let's see. This is 3. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, this isn't 3. This is 3, and then this is 5.2. And so if I draw these vectors, I have a 3, I have a 5.2, and I have a negative 2. Those are the vectors that I have. And then I add up the x components, I add up the y components to get rx and ry. rx is going to be 3 plus 0 ry is going to be 5.2 minus 2, and it gives me the components of r. And then in order to find the magnitude of r, I do the Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared plus 3.2 squared. Uh, what's that? That's equal to 4.4. So these vectors, what is a plus b? I draw a first, and then b, and then I my sum looks like that, so it's going to be B for number 12. Two objects are in free fall. Mass number one has a mass of 10 kilograms. Mass number two has a mass of 20 kilograms, which experiences the larger gravitational force. Gravitational force is the weight, and it's equal to M times G. G is the same for both, so the one with the bigger mass experiences the larger gravitational force, like in that Veritasium video we watched. Which of these statements is true. I have this inclined plane. There's a frictional force. The frictional force acts in a direction up the inclined plane. That's true. We, it's just like the one we saw earlier. The frictional force will decrease as the block speeds up. That's not true. It is true that the frictional force will, incre will decrease when you start moving, but not as it speeds up. The frictional force will decrease if theta increases. Okay, that is true, because if theta increases, the normal force increases. And you can think about this too, like if I make this inclined plane get steeper, at some point I'm going to get less and less friction, so this thing is more inclined to slide down. And then the block speed will decrease as it moves down the inclined plane. Actually the opposite is true, that it's going to increase in speed because it's accelerating in the same direction of its velocity. So 1 and 3 are the right answer, D. Elevator goes, uh, that third one might have been a little tricky for you to find. Uh, we did talk about this, but the uh, all the other there is no one option, so that might have been the only one that you saw. That's why my wife's calling. Okay, so elevator goes downward at a constant acceleration. What is the relationship between the weight of the object and the normal force on the block? Are right, we done these? When you go down 
that means that the normal force is less than the weight. So B is the right answer there. Normal force on an object is always perpendicular to the surface. None of these. Sometimes it's E. Sometimes it's equal to the gravitational force, but it doesn't have to be. 80 kilogram block is suspended by a rope in an elevator that is ascending at 3 meters per second squared. Uh, what is the tension in the rope? First of all, if I have a weight equal to 800 newtons, and I know if it's going up, then the weight has to be, the, the tension in the rope has to be bigger than 800. So I can get rid of this one, this one, this one, and this one. Oop. So the answer is C, but let's go ahead and do it. I do the sum of the forces in the Y. FT minus 8. 100 equals the mass, which is 80 times 3. So Ft equals 80 plus 240. That's 1,040, or just 1,000 newtons. OK, what is the normal force acting on this block? I have 10 kilograms. All right, this is sort of like our, it's accelerating downward, but that doesn't matter. Um, you can go back here for your response. It's going to be exactly the same. But let me show you. I have force weight here. And my normal force here. I know this angle is 30 degrees. Fn, Fw, sine of 30, Fw cosine of 30. I know that some of the forces in the direction in the y direction equals zero. And so I can find my uh, Normal force is just going to be the force weight times sine of 30. So uh, my Fn is equal to 100 newtons. Sine of 30 is equal to 50. Part is on a horizontal frictionless table. Once the cart has been pushed and released, what will happen to it? It will continue at a constant velocity. That's uh, Newton's second law. Or Newton's first law, law of inertia. Remember, the Aristotelian way to think about this is either C or D. But it's not. The answer is A. And then what did I do here? Oh, what's my favorite thing to do? I love coming to class. I, I love hanging out with y'all. I love talking about physics with y'all. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's my favorite thing to do, at least out of all these things. There are other things that I like to do better than coming to class. But definitely out of these things, that's my favorite thing. Okay, good exam.